Congresswoman Giffords, thank you. And thank you all so much for this honor. And, and Congresswoman, thank you for showing us how to lead, for being the embodiment truly of perseverance. It is such an honor to have an award named after you. And it is such an honor to be the first Texan to win this award. Woo! Texas is very much, very much on the front lines. It's in the front lines of the toughest challenges facing this country. We're a state where 20% are uninsured. We are a state where because of underinvestment, we face enormous challenges to education where many folks survived the pandemic only to die of carbon monoxide poisoning or hypothermia because the electrical grid failed under corrupt management. As we speak right now, there's a bill headed to the governor's desk that would functionally ban abortion. There's another one that would allow pretty much everybody to openly carry a gun. There are others being worked on that would make it so voters can be harassed and filmed as they cast their vote. Yes, the ghosts of this state's suppressive past still haunt us. And the old guard has pushed us to the brink. But despite that, and despite them, we are fighting. We are on the verge of change. Positive, creative government is being forged in this state. Like right here in my home in Houston, Harris County, where my family came after being born in Colombia during the drug war, where I lived the American dream, where I committed myself to provide opportunity for everyone. After school, I went to work in Southeast Asia. I was promoting free expression essentially promoting American democracy abroad. And I realized after some time that I needed to protect American democracy at home. Like so many women, I watched with horror what happened after the 2016 election. And I marched and I, I protested, I was upset. And then I decided to run for office. And now I'm county executive to Harris County, one of the most diverse in the nation, home to 5 million people with a $5 billion budget. And in the two and a half years I've been in office, we've been able to shift paradigms, to shift paradigms on the environment, making the largest investment in 30 years, promoting accountability, corporate social responsibility as opposed to perverse incentives on children investing in early childhood education and restorative justice instead of building more juvenile detention facilities, on just plain old good government, performance-based budgeting, improving our bond rating, daring to ask what's the best way of doing things as opposed to just doing things the same way they'd been done because that's the way they'd always been done, on voting, with creative approaches, with best practices, leading to the highest turnout in 30 years. But they're coming after us. The same legislature, the same old guard, where we created drive-through voting that voters of both parties loved and took advantage of, they're trying to make that against the law. 24-hour voting, which we instituted, that allowed shift workers and medical workers to cast their ballots. They're trying to legislate that away, where we had smart policies that virtually eliminated lines during the largest election in our history. They're trying to pass laws that would pretty much ensure that there are long lines in our urban areas here in Texas. The old guard is scared of change. They just wanna do whatever keeps them in power. And they're coming at us with everything they've got. But as the Congresswoman said, what they don't realize is that tough times breed tough people. And as the late, great Ann Richards said, we've been tested by fire and the fire lost. You've been tested by fire and you've persevered. Now, I know that many times it's frustrating, and in a state like this one, at least, and certainly everywhere these days, we feel like 
who are not able to work proactively, like we're fighting battles that we thought we won already. But we're also winning in other ways. We're creating that change. We're providing hope. We're building those policies. We're getting ready to take charge. Emily Sliss, thank you for this honor. But most of all, thank you for your unabashed trust in women and women's potential. To all of the activists out there, the supporters, the leaders of organizations that have been fighting for women's rights and women's right to choose, thank you for your perseverance. We're gonna keep fighting 100 years after women's right to vote. We are in the fight and our sights are held even higher. You can count on me to continue this fight and I'm so proud to fight it alongside you. Thank you.